Hello everybody, welcome to Off The Top, VJ Adams is my name and today I'll have a guest, someone I have a lot of respect for being in the business for over a decade and counting, stands for rap and more. He's not only been able to step into the shoes of executive producer at some point, management as well, a very corporate person. Um, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Iblis Ogabos. Ogabos, one name. What's up, my brother? Um, welcome. <laughs> that, that's the only evil. The I only, still, the I only still, evil you know. I still know. Um, welcome. I'll, I'll give you a crash, crash course. I'll give you a crash course in evil. So what is, what is Odogu? Odogu is um, a great guy. So I can call you, if I can hear yeah, my guys, you, Odogu. You can, yeah, Odogu. Odogu is dope. Odogu <laughs> is dope. How are you? Very well. There's, there's a lot to speak about. Let's start with, um, uh, real quick, at some point you step back to manage artists. Yeah. How was that journey? How hard was it? <laughs> okay. Um, you know, the truth is I never really wanted to rap full time. Mm. I always felt um, my strength, I, like I could diversify, right. make some music sometimes and then build a team, right. you know, put artists together, A&R, they are across the entire recording process and, um, and actually project other artists, you know. But um, artist management is something that just takes you and soaks you in, mm. you know, so and then it was a structure I was trying to build, so I wasn't I didn't have a lot of workforce, I didn't have a lot of staff. Right. So I had to multitask, I had to be the artist, I had to look after other artists, you know, I had to basically double up as as a manager of some sort. Yeah. yeah you know, but it, it was it, it wasn't easy. It wasn't easy because you then abandon your music because you were trying to fix other artists and make sure that their their careers project were projected as well. Is hip hop yeah. dead in Nigeria? Is rap dead? Sip, you need, you need to. <laughs> <laughs> no, you I have to you cough. Need to sip, you need to see my cough. No, I had to cough before answering that. Is, no, is no, 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 it's not. It's not. Um, when, when, it, when it grow, it's, it's a growing art form. It's an emerging market as far as. But, I'm uh, yeah. but ten, about 10, 11 years ago, you had Ogabos. Yeah. That evil boy. Yes. That was a smash most, hit record. Most definitely, I did. Um. It, so how is this thing it was, emerging? No, it's emerging because a lot of things have not happened for rap, for the rap culture in Nigeria. Right. What it is, is, you know, there is, in isolation, we've continued to work in isolation. Like the top, in the, the top echelon of rap in Nigeria has had a lot of great names that are basically been working for themselves, trying mm. to establish themselves. Um, there's no unification. There's no, we haven't put together that energy and moved as one front. You know, so, and that continues to put place gaps, you know, with rap music. Because Nigeria is also a rhythmic market. So, as you're trying to um, build the rap culture, you have our lamba, you have our street sound, you have the commercial music, which a, a bigger percentage would always gravitate towards. And then they will now lean back in and look at the rap with corner eye and say, okay, yeah, I also like the rappers, but the, we need to do more for rap music. Do you think the media calling certain rappers, indigenous rappers, marginalize the art form in itself? Do you think it does? Because I, I might have used that word as well at some point. Mm. Um, but I'm trying to readdress it. Is, it. is it inappropriate? Should everyone just be called rappers? I think everyone should be a rapper. Um, because what it is, is the indigenous stamp on, on artists kind of make them look like it's another genre, like it's a sub-genre within we didn't rap, you know, so to speak. But we're all saying the same thing. We're all spitting lyrics. It's just that I'm doing it in English and some other guy's doing it in Yoruba, right. and other guy's doing it in Igbo. But essentially, we're all driven by the same spirit, the same way we communicate, the same culture. We dress alike, we think alike. The thing with um, dialectical rap and um, is because it's dialectical, there are no barriers. The entry level is, is really very reduced. It's mm. not English. Right. Yeah. So you have the guy that is a vulcanizer, for instance, and he's hearing the dialect because it's Yoruba. Mm. You have the guy in, in Enugu or Anambra State hearing the, uh, Fino's lyrics, for instance, and he can hear it because language, language just opens up another kind of communication Kishin, between yeah. you and the fans. It's bigger. It's bigger than rhyming just in English. Right. Yeah. Because you know, that's talking, street, street language. Talking about Fino, I remember the first time a lot of people encountered Fino. This is beautiful. Though. Thanks. <laughs> the first time a lot of people encountered Fino was probably on Anamachi Kwano. Yes. 
Was Tell me, your relationship with Fina, how did he start? Where did he happen from? Because I knew he used to produce as well. Yeah, so um, my good friend, Raw, Raw, when I shout, shouted out and said, listen, yo, I have this kid, he produces. I needed to hear his, his records. Like, so I met up with Fino. You know, and I, I remember the first time I met Fino, I kept him waiting in, in some spot. He sat there for like four or five hours. Poor dude, I was holding meetings somewhere. And eventually I came out and he played, I'm like, okay, let me hear the beats. And he played two beats for me. I'm like, this is it. So he came all the way from, from the east, from Enugu, just to play two beats for me. Mm. You know, and I'm like, okay, okay, don't worry, we'll walk. I'll get back to you. I never did. And a year went by. And then he popped up again and said, listen, boss, I have more beats for you. And that's when we found the Anamachi uh. Kwano. That's when we found the beats. And I was drifting in between my first, my debut album and making my Oga Boss album, which was 2012. And Fino just came through and gave me that record and said, boss, this is what I think. I put a chorus, listen to it. If you don't like it, I don't know what else to make for you. I think we should stay with rap because that is how the world sees you. We tried some Lamba beats. We tried to copy some. We tried to, mm. you know, I have some of those beats. I'm not very proud of them, <laughs> you understand? <laughs> but but we, we tried some of those beats. I was like, boss, you're not sitting right on these beats, man. This is not your style. Let's make something like on to the next one, on to the next one, ah. you know? So that's what inspired an Amachi Kwano. You know, and he made an amateur. An amateur kind of means, do you really think I'm laughing with you? I'm not laughing with anybody. That's what it means. Yeah. Okay. Off the top continues in a few seconds. Uh, Il Bliss Oga Boss chatting with him on a lot of more diverse issues from rap, family, management, and more. Stand by. Off the top continues Il Bliss Oga Boss. Yes, sir. How? Longevity is an important and integral part of any career path for anyone. Mm -hmm. What would you say has kept you this long? Ah, hunger, hunger, hunger. Like I wake up every day and I feel like I just started. Like, like I, I, I don't ever want to get complacent with, with whatever it is that I have achieved or how many years I've been in the game. You know, so I just go back in like this is my debut album, this is my first single. You know, it's just, just some supernatural energy, which I, I know comes, it has to be divine, it comes from God, you know, and I'm always listening, just trying to tap into the culture because rap culture keeps evolving. So I'm talking, to, constantly talking to the new guy. You'll be shocked at the kind of guys I have conversations with, you understand? Don't be shocked to see me, I'm chatting with Zlatan and I'm like, <laughs> dude, how do you make these records? Because I'm always trying to learn, you know, so that's it, that's what keeps me in the game and a lot of goodwill. I have a lot of goodwill, you know. Thanks to cats like you. You no. understand? <laughs> um, yeah. I, I want to take you back to management real quick. I know at some point you, you've had to supervise quite a number of female artists. Yeah, yes, I have. How, how hard is that part of the job? Women are complicated. Women are sweet and complicated at the same time. I, I could tell you, dress up. We're going to Kaduna tomorrow. And you're like, I don't have anything to wear. I'm like, don't worry, we'll, we'll rough it, we'll jam on it. I can't do that with a girl. Mm. A girl needs everything in place. The nails and flake, the hair on flake, you know. They, they just come with a lot more things to worry about, you know, than, than guys. So and has that made it harder for female artists to thrive? Yeah, to, to a large extent it has, because um, you need to then put in the work that needs to be mad like your work rate now needs to be crazy and you need to be stable a lot of females also they, they are not built the guys are rugged for the most most of it so for, for girls sometimes the industry takes a toll on them mm. you know the late nights the rehearsals and everything it just that's sweet and they're meant to be created for my rib but then again we're just bending them over and over and because the industry is demanding you know, so especially when you are in demand as an artist. Right. Yeah, you know, and then the fears, they also have fears, fears of failure, fears of marriage. Am I going to get married? I'm wearing these little shorts. Is anybody going to marry me? Mm. You, you understand? I'm, I'm in a male-dominated space. Am I doing enough? It, it's a lot. It's a lot for them to, to contend with, you know, and it kind of makes you become a daddy of some sort, a big brother of some sort, always trying to mentor them and, you know, push them and, you know, it's... Who's your next to blow? Like in the Nigerian music yeah. space? Yeah, Nigerian music space. Tenny's already blown. Yeah, Tenny's, I think Tenny's <laughs> on a safe path. Yeah. Um, who's next to blow? Who's next to blow? 
Yeah, Johnny Drill is blonde, right? Well, it depends. <laughs> I think he's, he's um, alternative blown. He's, I think he has a niche market. Yeah, and his services is niche market. And they, they people, you know, because I, I like his music a lot. Yeah, for rap, I see a kid called Black Bones though. From, from okay, yeah, from Chocolate from, City. From Chocolate I City, City yeah. Okay. I, I think he's he's doing great for for himself. There's another girl that is swimming somewhere in the underground called Flo. She's very dope, but, you know, but. Flo is still trying to find her feet, you know. I've heard her on, on Show Them Camp's new album, you know, and I've heard her on a couple of records as well. So you know, I just keep my eye on on them. I know that they have a lot of potential and I know with the right direction they will do good. Do you have would you consider a lot of people as your friends or colleagues? Colleagues. So is so when I call names, you just tell me friend or colleague. This is dangerous. Though. I know. This could affect Am this could I? affect friend. Vector. <laughs> friend. I'm not going to set you up. I'm going to give you friend all through. You want you, to put me in trouble. No, 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 I'm just trying to figure out. You know, this is my brother. He's not even just my friend. Like, he's my guy. Files. Friend. I, I know the answer. I know the real answer to that. No, friend. Friend? Friend. Files is, is my friend. He looks out for me, man. Reminisce? Ah! <laughs> Beyond friend. That one is country cousin. <laughs> Uh, Fino? Eh? You know the answer to I that. that yeah. Fino is in the family tree <laughs> somewhere. Tree already, I mean. In fact, you know the truth is, I don't... I know, at the same time, I'll keep saying I don't go out a lot, I don't have a lot of friends, but see, the first four or five guys yeah, you called now, they're cool, you're I cool, consider them like, like, like really good friends. They are my friends because because they have, first of all, they have a lot of, we have mutual respect. It's For each other, symbiotic. which is Yeah, so they respect what I do, I respect what they do. We're never in anybody's space. We support each other. We might not see a lot of times in a mm. year, sit down and drink, but every time we see, it's special. Right. You know, I think maybe if the next names you add, I'll just tell you they're colleagues. <laughs> just, these guys are like my real guys. Like these are, I don't, real ones. I don't, like okay, real that's, that's, pre that's pretty good. Um, let's talk about the state of the country real quick i know you made mm -hmm. a record mm -hmm. to that effect yeah what was the feedback you got from that record oh it was crazy it is god um this is not a country they run it like a company they run it like a corporation 36 branches hmm. move money tranches <laughs> yeah, yeah. um there's a side of me that is common that's inspired by common talikwali fella um, and that side is the side that I feel like hip hop should mirror the times. Yeah. I feel like rap music, I feel like art, music, and essentially should also mirror the times that we are in. Not just lambda all the time, not just dance and forget our worries, because that seems to be what everybody is on. You tell Nigerians, man, Nigerians are happy people, just mm. give them happy vibes and, uh, and they just do their zanko and then they'll be all right, you know? But sometimes I feel like we owe it to society to paint some of these pictures with our music, you know? And um, It Is God was the record I made. I shot a viral video for it, two clips from here and there from YouTube mm. and some places, slapped it together and made a record and boom, the internet just went crazy. And everybody just started saying, you know, rappers don't speak enough. Rappers have the opportunity to, to mirror society and to fix things in society. But, but I think it's too much pressure on rappers. It's always <laughs> as though rappers are obliged to mirror the society. What happened yeah. to the singers? They, they make it look like the singers should be concerned with love songs, you know. And, oh, but and I... the truth about it is everybody, you, everybody that is in the arts, whether you are a singer, whether you paint, Whatever it is, you owe it to society to, you know, to, to use your art to represent what, what society stands for or what society is going through at every point in time. Some people are scared of being termed conscious artists mm. because they feel like being conscious is not, can be monetized. Can but, it? Yeah, being con of course. You have artists that year in, year out, they're pushing for causes. Every year, an Alicia Keys... Who I know is your girlfriend <laughs> after after Swiss Beats. And um, I'm a big fan. Yeah. And um and to a common sense, to a Tali Kwali, to Nas, to even Jay. Jay's is fighting for prison reforms. Mm. You understand? And that that guy is meant to be the guy on the on the top of the Forbes list. But they're there with all that money and wealth. They're still reaching out and trying to change society and make it better. You know, so I feel like 
at, at whatever level you are, you should fight for something in society. You should. You know, that's why we're popular and that's why we have a lot of um, followership. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so, uh, what kind of music is on your playlist when you're not making music? Mm. What do you listen to? Okay. Like, I have to be the biggest Bonner Boy fan now. And I dare anybody to come out and fight for that spot with me, man. <laughs> like, his entire catalog is, is, is on my playlist. I think he's an exceptional artist. Um, I listen to a lot of um, Camille Cabello. What's that? Yeah, name? Havana, Havana. Havana. Yeah, 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 I'm listening to a lot of pop music now so I can rest my head small because mm -hmm. I think every now and then I'm too entrenched in, in rap music. You know, I have a lot of rap on my playlist as well. Mm. Yes, you know, and then um, I have a lot of old school music as well. You know, a lot of um, some Cool and the Gang. You know, there's some Ed Wind and Fire, mm. uh, Miss Education and Lauren Hill. You know, Beautiful just, album. Yeah, it's, it's a mix, it's a blend. Mm -hmm.